I've been obsessed with cars for my whole life. It began at a very young age. I started traveling super young. I started traveling at, uh, I don't know, eight, nine years old. And I was always with my mom and we were always going through airports and um, you would walk into the little like convenience store in the airport and there was all the magazines. And for some reason, DuPont registry always caught my eye. And I would look at all these beautiful automobiles, all these gnarly V12s and just big, big dog cars and uh, you know, kind of envision myself in them one day. It's just violently beautiful. My name is Ryan Sheckler. I am 33 years old and I'm a professional skateboarder. If you would have told me when I was a kid that like I was going to be able to grow up, stay in my hometown and not only stay there, but like thrive there and then have my own training facility and, and skate park. Like I probably would have told you you were crazy. I think it's the coolest thing on the planet. You know, I, I literally live eight minutes away from 10,000 square foot indoor skate park that I can go to at any point in time, any hour of the day and go work on a trick that might have just popped into my mind. And uh, I do not take it for granted by any means. Um, I understand that, that it is a blessing. And uh, yeah, sometimes it still trips me out. It trips me out that that's my life, you know, that this is my life. Like I turned pro at 13, so I couldn't even have a car for what, three, four more years. And uh, I always wanted a truck. I always wanted a Range Rover and I always wanted a V12 Mercedes Benz. Those were like, those were my, my three. And uh, I just worked hard, dude. I worked hard and I won the truck. From that point, my first car after that, I bought a Range Rover. And then a couple years later, I, uh, I bought my V12 uh, S65 Mercedes Benz. And throughout my life of buying automobiles, I've probably had 14, 13, 14 different cars, um, but they've all been goals. They've all, I've, I've set a goal to get them and then uh, tried to accomplish that, whether it took a year, two years, three years. This one was kind of a, a snap call though. <laughs> when I heard about the TRX, I was intrigued. I was super intrigued. Big V8, supercharged, uh, 700 horsepower, all wheel drive truck. I couldn't get on the list fast enough to get one, honestly. And uh, once I got it, I drove it, uh, I drove it pretty hard and realized that there were some things that I wanted to do to it. And uh, that's where the fun begins with me and, and cars. And I don't like to go all in at once on the truck. I like to piece it out because it, uh, it makes it feel brand new every time. Every time I do something like wheels, like I did wheels and then I did tires. Um, Robbie Woods just did my front bumper. Uh, Baja Designs did the lights. Uh, Baja HQ did all the work on it. And then now the, uh, the creme de la creme and, and the last step for me right now on my list for the truck, the MagnaFlow exhaust. Hey everyone, it's Rich and we're here at the Tech Center and we have a special guest today, Ryan's with us. Uh, we've got his TRX and we've got a little surgery uh, that we're gonna do today. Yep. Uh, we're gonna inject a little bit of performance and a little bit of that sound, uh, but more or less, we're gonna also take a look at how we got there, give Ryan a tour of all the facilities and really see what this sounds like when we get all the parts in. Can't wait, super stoked, thank you guys. Yes, let's get the day going, man. I knew I was going to get a, uh, a walk around of the facility. And I think in my mind, I couldn't really comprehend what that was going to entail. The incredible machinery, the attention to detail, just the, the sheer volume of, of what you guys do here. Um, there was no way I could have wrapped my mind around that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so sick. We wanted the garage feel, so all the garage doors still open. So if we wanna open up the area, we can kind of do that. Uh, we wanted an area that was also like teaming wise. We, we have a lot of people that work under this building facility. I think we're close to about 150 in this building. 
we wanted to see critical people, like look across, open, see who's in their office. You know? It reminds me of like a super sick modern hotel yeah. where like you have, you know, the atrium the in the middle. rooms around yeah. and like sick lobby. I liked how I was asking like, hey, where's, where's the restroom? He's like, oh, just pass the Ferrari to the left. I'm like, oh, <laughs> sick. This building is closer to 274,000 square feet. Two hundred. Oh, what the heck? So well, we cut it in half. And basically, this is not very different than what you would experience through FedEx. Um, we have all the different bays, and we literally have a FedEx bay, we literally have a uh, UPS bay, and all the shipping that we do comes down and is filtered through real time. So let's, let's take a look. The first two things you're kind of see what we mean by like automation and what we've changed from like assembly line work into more robotic cell. It's one of those almost ASMR moments where it's just very soothing to watch it do these very deliberate processes. Bro, I've never over. ever seen a rope. My favorite part about the factory tour today was uh, was kind of getting to see the the mix of the robotics and the human interaction on making these parts, and then getting the breakdown of like why the robot arms are in there, and then also why the human aspect is still so important. And I think the marriage of the two. Um, was very, really intriguing to me and you could see how it worked hand in hand or I guess machine arm and hand. So it's moving back and forth with the wheel spinning it down creating the cone shape and it'll run back and forth and you'll see the head on the back kind of go back and wow. forth. Wow, yeah, yeah. And then it'll pop out here as a finished product. Oh my gosh, dude. Flip it around to the other side. So how is it pushing it? Is it cutting or is it? No, so it's, you know, have you ever taken a piece of like copper tubing on the back of the fridge and cut it off? Yeah, yeah. So imagine not making that a, a sharp edge, but a rolled edge. Every time you roll it, it shrinks the end to a cone. Okay. So what it's doing is it, it's doing it so fast that it looks like it's just going back and forth. But what it's doing is it's going cone smaller, smaller, back up, cone smaller, smaller, and then you get the finished product. Unbelievable, bro. No welding and we get the cone. So. That was so crazy to watch. Yeah. And we've got more of it over here, too. Next level, huh? Whoa, dude. Even the forklift... It's just wild to be able to come literally 30 minutes away from my home down to a facility of this magnitude and uh, be treated with such respect. And like, literally, we were walking around in there and we didn't get in anybody's way. Everything is run so meticulously and so perfectly uh, it, it was baffling, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm still processing how today went, for sure. Approach, so makes it safe to use. <laughs> baffling. That's wild. Bro, it's so much like, so much prettier too. I literally just watched all of these pieces be made in the factory. So it's a trip to see it go from like, just a raw metal to like form and all of this. And that machine did that. All these pieces were so perfect. All the welds were so perfect. And I really kind of look at people when I'm in a big facility like this and everyone was super nice, waving, smiling. Um, you can tell that people like to work here. And I think that's a huge part of, of business. And uh, like I said, to be a, a product that's, that's made in California and US made and of this quality is, is incredible. And it's, uh, it's a company I, I love being able to work with. Ready guys? All right. Well, fire this bad boy up. Way different. Crazy. Nice. 
night and day, dude. Jeez. Yes, dude. So crazy. It's really wild how like, you can feel it, but you can't really like, I know it's way louder. Pretty chill in there though? It's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive. Good. Mag and flow are nothing, man. Period. Yeah, I've had, I've had cars and, and cool cars and I've done, you know, little modifications, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to go out into the desert and like, go race or just have, you know, the opportunity to go on some of those off-road trips that these guys like at Baja HQ are always going on where they're ripping through Mexico for three days. And like that looks super, super fun to me. Um, I'd love to go to a driving school, man. And like learn how to race a Ferrari, like learn how to race. So, so much different, dude. <laughs> it's so much different, it's actually insane. Love it. It's beyond sick. I don't even wanna know like what the straight pipes sound like. The straight pipes would probably scare me. It's just throaty, <laughs> so sick. Uh, I think for me, just my goal would be just growth, growth in the uh, in the space and and knowledge. Yeah, I'm about to have a daughter. I could have a daughter while we're doing this interview, honestly. Yeah, it's special. It's special, and it hits me. Uh, it hits me, dude, for sure. And I know it's about to hit me really hard once she's actually here. I feel that the things I've been through in my life and the, uh, the trials and tribulations have, have led me to a point to, uh, to have a lot of experiences that will help with this uh, next chapter of fatherhood. Yeah, Sandlot Times is special. We've been calling ourselves the Sandlot for the last six years, you know, and there was just one night, and I'm a big fan of, of Sandlot, the original movie uh, that played a huge role in my life as a kid. Um, just wanting that like freedom, you know, and we found it one night and I was just like, man, this is our sandlot. This is exactly what this is. Like we're, we're in our own sandlot. And, uh, my business partner, Mike was like, well, what if we made boards? Like, let's just make them for fun. So we started making them for fun. I took a real interest in creating a skateboard that was perfect for kids. Uh, we just did R and D on, on what fit kids and what was going to transition them from a, a smaller board to a bigger board. Uh, the easiest and uh, we came up with this board and and it's crushing it dude and I'm seeing the actual difference in kids skateboarding but also in their confidence and how they feel on a board how they look on a board uh, the smiles they're giving to their parents when they actually learn a new trick because the board works and so yeah Sandlot Times is my skateboard company super proud of it and and it's fun I kind of looked at myself like, well, what am I doing for others around me? What am I doing for people that, that I don't know? Like, what am I doing? And that's where Sheckler Foundation started. And uh, we started with Children's Cancer Research Fund and uh, did a big fundraiser for them. And that naturally progressed into injured action sports athletes. And that kind of made its way into Red Bull's Wings for Life. And then we do a lot of work with uh, the autistic community and adaptive action sports athletes and and it's just been kind of just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and um, our out outreach has become bigger and uh, we're a small foundation still but um, nonetheless we're out here doing what we can to change the lives of of uh of people and it's been really rad and i don't plan on stopping ever yeah man life's good that's good, I'm just taking it as it comes. You know, people ask me what my, my year, two year, five year goal is, and I couldn't tell you. Um, I don't know what the rest of today holds. I don't know what tomorrow is. I just know uh, I'm trying to stay in the moment as much as possible. And uh, super thankful and super appreciative of this opportunity to come to Magnaflow today and uh, see what you guys do, see the, 
just in-depth detail and work and dedication to, to the product. And thank you, Magnaflow. And I, I hope this is the beginning of a, of a long relationship. So appreciate it.